In this lecture, we deal with imperfect bifurcations. Pitchfork bifurcations are fairly common in problems that have symmetry. In many real world cases, the symmetry is only approximate. An imperfection can actually lead to a slight difference between the left and the right. We now go ahead and explore such imperfections. Consider x dot is equal to h plus rx minus x cubed. If h is equal to 0, we have the normal form of a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. And if h is not equal to 0, the symmetry is broken and we refer to h as an imperfect parameter. The equation is x dot is equal to h plus rx minus x cubed and we have two independent parameters to worry about, h and r. So we keep R fixed and go ahead and vary H. The first step is to analyze the fixed points. So let's plot the graphs of Y is equal to Rx minus X cubed and Y is equal to minus H on the same axis. So for R less than or equal to zero, That's the line y is equal to minus h and that's the curve for y is equal to rx minus x cubed. Note that the cubic is monotonically decreasing and it intersects with y is equal to minus h exactly once. For r greater than zero, we get a much more interesting scenario that shows up. So that's the curve and that's one intersection, that's another intersection, and then we get a third intersection. So we can get one, two, or three intersections, and all of these are possible, depending on the value of h. So the critical case actually occurs when the horizontal line is just tangent to either the local minimum or the local maximum of the cubic. So this yields a saddle node bifurcation. To find the value of h, note that the cubic has a local maximum when ddx of rx minus x cubed, which is equal to r minus 3x squared, is equal to 0. And so x max is equal to the square root of r by 3. And the value of the cubic at the local minimum is r times x max minus x max cubed, which is equal to 2r by 3 times the square root of r by 3. So similarly, the value at the minimum is the negative of this quantity. And saddle node bifurcations occur when h is equal to plus minus h critical, which is a function of r, where h critical is equal to 2r by 3 times the square root of r by 3. So the equation x dot is equal to h plus rx minus x cubed has three fixed points for the absolute value of h less than h critical and has one fixed point for the absolute value of h greater than h critical. 
Now let us plot the bifurcation curves h is equal to plus minus h critical in the RH plane. So that's h versus r. Yeah, that's H critical, that's minus H critical. That's where we have three fixed points and there we have one fixed point. So the two bifurcation curves meet tangentially at RH is equal to zero, zero. And this is called a cusp point. So side node bifurcations occur all along the boundary of the regions except at the cusp point. So this is where we have a co-dimension to bifurcation. This means that we have to tune two parameters H and R to achieve this type of bifurcation. A bifurcation that is achieved by tuning a single parameter is a co-dimension one bifurcation. Now such diagrams are referred to as stability diagrams and they show the different types of behavior that can occur as one moves around in the parameter space, which is the RH plane in this case. Let's plot the bifurcation diagram for X star versus R for fixed h. So consider the case h is equal to 0 and plotting x versus r. So when h is equal to 0, we have the familiar pitchfork bifurcation. When h is not equal to 0, then you get something a little more interesting. So when H is not equal to zero, the pitchfork disconnects into two pieces. The upper piece consists of stable fixed points and the lower piece has both stable and unstable branches. We consider the bifurcation diagram for x star versus h for fixed r. We first consider the case where r is less than or equal to 0 and we plot x versus h. So when r is less than or equal to 0, there is one stable fixed point for each h. Now we consider the case r greater than 0, which proves to be more exciting. When R is greater than 0, there are three fixed points when the absolute value of H is less than H critical and one otherwise. Note that the middle branch is unstable and the upper and the lower branches are stable. The topic of discussion in this lecture was imperfect bifurcations. Now we get pitchfork bifurcations in situations which have symmetry. But the issue is that in the real world, the symmetry may not be exact, but in fact may only be approximate. Now let's consider the following dynamical system. Let x dot is equal to h plus rx 
minus x cubed where h and r are two parameters. Now when h is equal to 0 then we get the familiar pitchfork bifurcation. But h can also be non-zero in which case we get an imperfection coming into the system and so h is actually referred to as an imperfect parameter. So now we have two parameters r and h and a reasonably sensible way to analyze the system is to keep r fixed and then vary h and then keep h fixed and vary r. Additionally, what's also sensible is to plot the bifurcation curves in the RH plane itself. And that's a reasonably sensible thing to do when you have more than one parameter in the system. And when you plot curves in the RH plane, these are sometimes referred to as stability charts or as stability diagrams.